And there are concerns that the situation could get worse in the next two weeks. Yesterday, if you watched the press conference um, uh, addressed by the information minister, you did hear him talk about the process of pandemics and the fact that it climaxes and then gets to a tipping point. Well, he listened to the information minister make, giving all of us that warning about what to expect in the next two weeks he describes as critical. The health experts tell us that the next two weeks are critical in determining whether or not we will get significant community spread. They tell us that the general theory in pandemic management is that often it is likely that the numbers go up a bit before the curve or the situation gets better. Therefore, they are bracing for the possibility of some limited recordings of more cases in the medium term, but they continue to assure us that the systems they are putting together and continuing to ramp up are such that they will be able, hopefully, to contain it and ensure that we hold this virus in check. I think if you follow some of the graphs that have been shared by the WHO, usually it's a bell-caped shave. It's a bell-shaped curve. And the challenge really is how quickly you can arrest it. And so the systems they are putting in place are not to say that they don't expect to see any more. That's our hope. That's our wish. But the work they are doing is to ensure that should we even have any, they can hopefully very quickly arrest it. And that's an important bit of information to put out there. So let's try and learn a bit more about this theory of pandemic management. Joining me on the phone now is Dr. Kofi Boni. He is a senior research fellow at the Noguchi Memorial Institute. Sir, thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. Now, what, help us understand a bit more uh, of this theory of pandemics. It says that it's going to, it climaxes, goes up, and then it gets to a tipping point. How would you break this down to our, you know, understanding? Uh, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to your listeners. Uh, if you could speak up a bit for me, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? I do hear you. Yeah. So uh, basically what this means is that where we have gotten to, uh, yes, we have identified some cases that we are referring to them as imported cases. Mm. But these imported cases have had people that are primary contact. That is, people generally came into contact with these people. Mm. So there is a possibility that these other primary contacts will start showing symptoms. Right. And when they start showing symptoms, quickly their samples have to be taken. And they have to be tested. And as to whether they will be positive or not. In the moment we pick the samples and we test, and well, there could be some positives and it will, uh, the numbers will go up. And there could mm. also be some mm. negative. Mm. Mm. So okay. that is basically what it is. So at the moment we are in the state where we are, Yes, we have gotten the initial cases, importations, but these people have come into contact with us. What we are hoping and praying for is that we don't get to a situation where we call the community uh, or the community outbreak. Uh, people have gone out there that were not restrained mm. and now are in all over the place that they are making and they, they are infecting us. Mm. Mm. And then if we should have this sort of isolation procedures in place, uh, people coming. <coughs> into contact with others and they yeah. start showing if we can isolate them and treat. That is isolation, you test, you treat, then more or less you manage or whatever it is. I'd like us to talk a bit more about that. But before that, uh, the, you talk about the community transmission and you indicated from what you're saying that seems much more dangerous, is it? Yes, it is. It is. I mean, if Somebody is supposed to be self quarantined mm -hmm. and he doesn't do that and he gets into the community and he starts showing symptoms. You never know. I assume the person picks a public transport, comes into contact with several other people. The people that we come into contact with are going to several different places. So that is where we call the community transmission. So mm -hmm. you go there, you go and spread yours. So, that is, so if you know that you have come into contact with anybody, that uh, either has been tested and it's positive or not. You mm -hmm. just have to make sure that you stay or you self quarantine yourself. You, you don't go out. It's self isolation. So the period of the 14 days that has been uh, established. 
before you can go but the moment you go out and you start showing symptoms mm. anybody that you have come into contact with that too becomes a potential uh, will get the effect so okay. you have to now go after the person too. and see the contact tracing will spread and you have to you have so many people that now you have to monitor and that is where the community transmission comes in and we are going to have upward number of cases certainly because a lot of people are going to get it now but if we keep people restrained to uh, uh, self protection then that means we have chances of uh, having the, of, of the infection hey, so from what the minister said, from what you have said, and perhaps what we have seen on the world stage, the numbers are going to go up. It is to be expected. It's only a matter of um, when and not if. Do you think, from what you have seen and from your knowledge as a health professional, that we yes. are... So, so basically, it comes back to the same thing. If we, if we are practicing the preventive measures, mm -hmm. uh, it is one thing. But then if people are not going to restrain themselves, especially people who have known, that they are yeah. coming to contact with people that are potential uh, people who are having the virus, especially people that have been identified, have been identified uh, have been monitored, and you are going to also go around. You see, that is where the problem is. The mm. moment they get out, and then there will be a problem. Uh, like uh, what happens, uh, I mean, for example, if a school gets, like a person in the school gets a kid, mm. and the school shuts down. Yeah. Everybody goes home. That's the problem because okay. if the, a person in the school getting a case means that anybody who is primary contact, anybody who is closer to the person who is in the case has to be monitored for a period of time. But if they allow them to go home, mm -hmm. then it means that wherever they are going, if they start showing symptoms, they also have the potential to spread, to the spread those symptoms. The virus, mm, yeah. mm. It looks like difficult times, but I, I was I wanted to find out from you whether or not you think, from what you've seen, your experience, and what's going on so far, that we will be able to, within this period where we're expecting the numbers to go up, whether we'll be able to contain it from what we have, resources available, etc. That resources available is you know, is a. Is a government person or political person has to answer that question. I mean, for us at Noguchi, mm. our main concern is to do the testing. Mm. And uh, the good thing is that it's not only Noguchi that is now testing. And mm. We have cases here also in Kumasi. So if we get overwhelming number of cases, certainly some will go to Kumasi for, for the testing. Okay. Uh, so yeah. for us, uh, they're doing the testing. I think for now, we are in the capacity to do uh, to test as many as, I mean, the numbers that are coming in. I don't know when mm. it will start escalating. That we cannot. But for now, we are managing. Right. Yeah. And that's and the I point think, that I was making, because even in the United States, they've had yeah. problems with testing as, as to how how many test kits we have available, which is why I come to you. So for Noguchi, for example, if we have, if the, the numbers escalate into the thousands, are we able to test as many? Unless I check the resources we have at the moment, but uh, if if we are going to the thousands, you know every institution will struggle. I mm. mean, every institution, if we start going up to thousands, we are yeah. checking. I mean, we are testing thousands of samples. Every institution, even the US, will struggle. Yeah. So you know we will have to come to our wits. And so certainly, if we start getting those kind of huge numbers, we will certainly have problems. Right. We just hope that we don't get, we don't get there. I asked this because yesterday I hosted some people here in the in the studio, and um, I, I, I've skipped the, the the name of the institution has skipped me a bit. But they talked about how they could help, uh, especially at the regional level and in the remote parts of the country where they could help with testing. They talk about uh, is it molecular testing. I don't know if you have heard anything about this, and if yeah, what, what we do is also molecular testing. Yeah, I'm looking at this. Uh, with genetic material of the virus, that is molecular testing, and that's what we do. And that's what I know cases here also that, apart from these two institutions, I mean, no good changes, I don't know of any other mm. institution in the country that... Uh, mm. they, they, they talk about how they, they will be able to uh, come in to help, and I don't know, perhaps after this we can uh, link them up with you so that we see how that uh, well, that Maybe could that one help. should go to the ministry. I mean, uh, right, not to you. The, okay. Uh, the ministry that designates uh, the places for testing. So maybe if the ministry assesses them and they see them fit to do the testing, right. they, 
Mm -hmm. And, and, and then you, you mentioned also um, the isolation and the treatment, you know, that, that particular uh, cycle. Could you take us through that again? So basically, so when, when a kid uh, is suspected, mm -hmm. the best thing is you self-isolate, you test, you treat. Basically, that is the secret. Okay. So you so test, you isolate, and then you treat. Yes. You self-isolate, you test. Samples will be taken if the person is self-isolated. Samples will be taken. Mm. You treat. Okay. Uh, I mean, they, I mean, they now they're doing the uh, supportive therapy, so they they, mm. they do that case management. So, at what point should one go to the hospital and ask to be tested? Yeah. So, I, at the point I start showing any of them, any or all. Yes, especially if you know that you have just returned from a place where we have had case or you have come into contact with an infected person. Hmm. So that, that link should be there. It's not if, if if it's not you get fever, you have dry cough, then you go. You see, if you are not sure whether you have come into contact with anybody, you can go. But if you know that you have just returned from a country where we have had cases or you have come into contact with anybody who has been identified or who has been confirmed as a case, mm. then you see any of the symptoms, then you go. Okay. Now, now, what we are not doing because of maybe possibly because of logistics yeah. is that if you have come into contact with somebody who is positive or who has been identified as a confirmed case, you have to go and check before symptoms start showing. We are not doing that. Basically, I'm thinking because of logistics. Because otherwise, a lot of people will come in that they want to be tested. Mm, yeah. Maybe I'm traveling, I want to get a clearance certificate or something, so I yeah. want to be tested. Maybe we don't do that. So, so you start showing symptoms, you cannot go to okay. the you go to us, but you have to be examined before they take the sample. Mm. And before you go, in the next two weeks, which we're told are uh, critical, what should we be doing? I know you've mentioned being, uh, you know, observing all the personal hygiene tips that we've been told. So that the preventive, is there... basically the preventive... Uh, measures that have come up. Even though you have been uh, educating us yeah. uh, every now and then, uh, cough into a tissue and dispose of it properly. Uh, you develop a habit of regularly washing your hands, sanitizing where you don't have soap and water. Uh, those basic ones, make sure that the social distance is uh, one meter apart. If the person is not coughing, maybe two meters apart. If the person is coughing, these are the preventive measures that are in place. And and we have been learning from Joy FM, so I think you, you, <laughs> you know more about this than, than we know. <coughs> well, uh, I, I be, are, are you are you confident? I, <laughs> and should we come in? <laughs> I know, but I don't know of I don't know of any exposure to any person <laughs> that has uh, that has uh, you know uh, been confirmed <laughs> as positive. But before you go again, though, I've. Seen, we've seen what's happening in Italy, and I think that if you want to work with the pandemic curve, Italy has been all the way to the top, but they still seem to be uh, in, at a very crucial point. Is it possible that even after the, the, the climax uh, point, that you will still be at the tipping point and still go back to, to the climax? Uh, well, it's difficult for me to say as I start here now, because some of the things, it's a new virus. So the way things are going, so that is, we, we, we can't even handle, mm -hmm. we can't even un, un, understand, and uh, we can't, I mean, more research is going to be, every now and then people are coming up with uh, papers, especially from China, of mm -hmm. how they went through and what they saw, so we are reading more information about this new virus every now and then, so it's difficult for you to make predictions or projections into what is happening. Italy, yesterday, I think I heard that one day, were 475 people died. I mean, this is yes. astronomical. Yes. Uh, it is straight. You don't, you don't understand what is going on there. So, as I stand here now, I cannot forget. Okay. I cannot, it's difficult for you to say. It's understandable. You, you can say something that uh, something else will happen then. Is that what, that is what you said, and it's not happening. So, why mm. is it so? So, it's mm. difficult. It's a new virus. So, we are learning more about it every day. So, so, so it's difficult to make predictions or predictions about what will happen. Doc Bonnie, right. 
Doc, thank you so much for your time um, this afternoon. Dr. Kofi Boni is a researcher with the Noguchi Memorial Institute, and you've heard all that he had to say. Um, you need to be careful because research is still ongoing about how this works, and so it's not really cast in stone, and it's not really what we know in the past.